Good morning. We are in uh, Franklin, Pennsylvania. So we're uh, we're a bit south of Erie. And uh, so I'm going to fly from uh, Franklin to Meadville to, um, oh, Ashtabula. It is in Ashtabula County, but uh, airport in uh, Ohio and then back to Erie. And uh, so this will be a cross-country flight, uh, NBR, um, and uh, that's kind of what the plan is today. Weather doesn't seem too bad. Um, seems pretty breezy at my place, but uh, doesn't seem as breezy here. But until uh, we get going, uh, we won't uh, we won't know for sure uh, exactly what's going on. So. So let's get the plane started, and uh, we'll kind of kind of go from there. So, uh, uh, <clears throat> so I'm using a couple of extra tools. Uh, I'm using a program called OVR Toolkit that allows me to get uh, my uh, chatty window in uh, in the uh, VR, and um, also uh, I have uh, Pilot to ATC that I'm going to be using today. And, uh, and I also have my whole desktop uh, in the VR cockpit with me. Uh, that's uh, the OVR toolkit stuff. And then I have uh, three plugins. Uh, I have a plugin called X Checklist. That is, I'm a co-author of that plugin. This other uh, plugin here is called uh, Avatab, and um, it's kind of like a like a like a virtual tablet. So. So it's like having a tablet where you can have maps, you can have uh, airport information, a whole bunch of stuff. And that also is integrated with Navigraph. So all the Navigraph charts uh, are natively inside this uh, application. And the other one is, uh, is a fly with Lua script. It's uh, how I can set my sound settings in VR without having to get into uh, X-Plane itself. I can just do it right here from the cockpit. Okie dokie, let's, uh, we'll go ahead and get going here. So next. OBSM sound. All right, so we're checking to make sure that uh, OBS is, uh, is received my sound. It is. Check. Mod mic in position. Make sure my uh, wireless mod mic's here. Yep, there we go. Check. OBS mod mic sound. One, two, three, four, yeah. Check. OBS streaming. Yep, I can see it streaming. Check. Over yep. toolkit windows. That's here. Check. Fly with Lewis sound script. That's here. Check. A by a tab plugin. Check. Rep weight and balance. Okay. The plane that I'm flying today is a default Cessna 172 with a reality expansion pack. Weight and balance. So I think I'm going to put 17 in it. So if I go here, back up, 7, here, back up, 7, apply, we're good. Everything look good, yeah. Just, just I ain't got the plane too crazily loaded. Good. Check. Rep maintenance log. Oh. I'll take a quick look to see if I broke anything. Last time I flew it, I don't think I did, but I've been surprised before. Yeah, everything looks good. Looks good. Looks good. Good, 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 good. All right, we're done with that. Check. Two brakes. <coughs> Test and set. Three fuel selector. Both. Four fuel shut off valve. On, in. Six beacon. On. Seven avionics switch. Off. Eight master switch. On. Nine throttle. Open one fourth inch. 
10 mixture. Idle cut off. A auxiliary pump. On. B mixture. Rich until 3 to 5 GPH then cut off. C auxiliary pump. Off. 12 starter. Engage. 1 ignition switch. Start. 2 mixture. At engine start. Rich. 3 engine. RPM 1000 RPM. 4 oil pressure. Check. 5 mixture. Leaned max. 6 flaps. Retract. 7 avionics. On. Port meet bill weather. Wind 180 at 5. Visibility more than 10. Sky clear. Temperature 19. 2.16. Altimeter 3003. 8 instruments. Port meet bill weather. Okay, um... Let's, well, going towards east, that looks pretty close. Um... Oh, this elevation here should be 1540. So, um, let me check something. The altimeter. Cessna 6 Bravo Golf altimeter is 3007 at Venango Regional. That altimeter 3007. Altimeter 3020. That altimeter 3007. Altimeter 3007. That looks way better. So the altitude here is 1540, and uh, where it was, it was around 1690. So, so I checked two things there. One is I checked to make sure pilots to ATC's weather is kind of matching. So let me go here. Fort Meadville weather. Wind 180 at 5. Visibility more than 10. Sky clear. Temperature 19, 2.16. Altimeter 3003. Okay. So it's it's close enough for me. So so that set that looks like it's set. Set. The instruments are set. Breaks. We're good. So we'll just wait a little bit here. Got letting the uh, engine uh, warm up. I need to get the C uh, tap dialed in. So what do we have here? Yeah, I'm not going to use clearance and delivery. I'm just going to use Unicom. That COM1, 122.700. COM1 set to 122.7. Alrighty. Say, active runway. Cessna 6 Bravo Golf arriving and departing runway 21. Okay. So we'll put my heading indicator at 21. That uh, that helps me when I'm like taxiing around here to uh, kind of make sure I get pointed in the right direction. So. Alrighty. Uh, taps in the oil oil taps in the green. Uh, I think we are ready to taxi. Everything look right. Got a taxi light on. Got beacon light on. Flaps are up. Running around a thousand RPM. See if I can get this thing to turn. Not sure why this parking position is uh, got me pointed towards the grass. I would have thought the position should have been rotated. In the uh, WED, in the uh, World Editor, you can uh, <coughs> you can control 
which way the airplane's plant uh, pointed when you when you uh, when you launch. Give myself a little bit more power here. Maybe a lot more power. Once I get all the way up, my both my wheels are on the grass right now, and it makes a difference. There's a lot more drag here. So I was trying to do it at uh, 1,000 RPM. wasn't working. So and when I get the wheel turned, I'm trying to turn it almost all the way. It, uh, <laughs> uh, it, it makes the situation even worse. So, but we'll, uh, we'll just take our time here. As soon as I get on the on the pavement at 1500, this plane's gonna take off. Not fly, but just accelerate. So it's just like slowly. So now I neutralize my rudder. Just watch it accelerate. <laughs> That's how much drag there is on grass. <laughs> So, that part there simulated pretty good. <laughs> Alrighty. Got my uh, map out here. Got my brakes on. Uh, yeah. Okay, we're going to 2 1. Uh, I think I'm got to go this way. Let me look. Yep. I gotta go. I gotta go that way. Oh, get out of here to Taxiway Delta. And on my map here, it absolutely shows a uh, Taxiway Delta. So, so on we go. They got the engine running right around a uh, thousand RPM. So. Should allow me to taxi pretty good. We gotta do a little jog up here to uh, to get on the uh, the taxiways aren't aren't straight. There's like a jog up here where uh, where the other where the other runway crosses. So and uh, there's no tower, so there's no way I can ask for permission to cross this runway. I just have to uh, kind of look and make sure nobody's coming. So. Alrighty. Yeah, it looks like it should be a pretty nice day. I was doing some testing a couple of days ago. I took off from here and uh, the ceiling was like unbelievably low. So, so this area here, let me stop and make sure. Yeah. So this is just a ramp area here. So I gotta jog over here a little bit and then get on this taxiway. And but I gotta stop and check and make sure nobody's on this runway. So we'll go do that. You can definitely tell I go it gave it more power than what I needed to. Okay, so, right here is the whole short line. About that way, nope. Got road traffic, don't see any airplanes. Alrighty, on across we go. So we gotta do even more of a jog. I don't know why they didn't make these like straight, but you never know. So, look again, check, nope, nobody's coming. Cool. So we taxi out here. We're uh, we're heading to uh, runway two one. So my heading bug set it to one, and uh, I got a little bit too much power here. Uh, so it is in the uh, bottom, it's down in the bottom of this. So. Alrighty, coming up to the end here. Oops. Oh, come on, Bill. Whoa! Oh, 
not sure what that was about. <laughs> uh, I'm usually pretty good on the rudder belts. <laughs> Alrighty. So, uh, like I said, there's no tower. So all I can do is make a radio call that basically says that I'm going to take this runway, so. That's not 6 Bravo Golf taking runway 2-1. Cessna 6 Bravo Golf, this is Venango REGL Unicom on 122.7, please repeat your request. And that wasn't a request, it was a statement. <laughs> I don't need anything from you. I already have everything I need. So I got all my uh, proper lights on. We're uh, ready, to, ready to go fly. There we go. Trim looks pretty close. Careful. There we go. Alrighty. Should be able to fly about now. I don't think my uh, compass here... I don't think I got these two quite lined up. I ain't gonna worry about it quite yet. But, uh... to be on a heading of a uh, 322. I'm just waiting until I'm uh, certainly clear of the uh, of the airport. Looks like I am. So I gotta get wrapped around here. I'm gonna pull back power, maybe 2200 or so. I'm just doing a slow turn here, trying to get, uh, trying to get on heading here. Cause it looks like I should be on a 323, so. So I gotta do almost a 180 here. But but I wanted to get away from the airport before I did uh, pull the turn in too much, so. Yeah, I can see uh, my line coming in. So, uh, I have a flight plan. So I have a magenta line but I'm not going to use the autopilot. Uh, I'm going to uh, uh, hand fly. So, we've got 23 miles to go. So I'm trying to figure out what I want to do for el elevation, so. I think I'm going to level up at 3,000. Normally, if I'm going westbound uh, and I'm over 3,000, I would fly at 4,500. There's only 23 miles to go, so it's kind of it's a little bit pointless. So, alrighty. So we're coming up on it. Uh, so I'm going to try to get the uh, plane to level right here. See what. Uh, See how the plane starts behaving with around uh, 2200 RPM. So.
Alrighty. On our way. That COM1 standby, 123.000. COM1 standby set to 123 decimal zero. So I put the, uh, I put the CTAP for Meadville, uh, in my standby frequency, so. So I still have the, uh, the CTAP for, for Franklin, I still have that in the active, so. So we'll wait till I get out here a little ways, uh, 15, 10 miles out, something like that. And then I'll uh, check with Meadville to see what the uh, uh, what the active runway is. So. I may uh, after I get out here, ways I may flip the frequency and then put the uh, AWOS in the uh, in the standby so I can check what uh, what Meadville's weather is. So. And that'll that'll pretty much tell me what runway, what which end of there's only one runway. Which end of the runway we're going to use? So. Oh, a little too much power. So we're doing uh, about 110 knots. Uh, ground speed's around 100 knots. Yeah, we ain't doing 110. <laughs> we're doing about 95. I looked at it a bit wrong. Oh, just a little off course. There you go. A little better. Yeah, so this is the... Uh, in the northern part of Pennsylvania, but, uh, but south of Erie. Titusville, where they, uh, where oil was first discovered, is not too far from here. It's pretty close to here, so in this area, anyhow. Where Drake's Well was, is, was, maybe. Probably still there, but it doesn't work. It probably doesn't work anymore. Yeah, so I was trying to figure out how I wanted to fly today, and I just decided... Um... Wasn't sure if I was going to fly with the autopilot, or if I was uh, going to uh, uh, fly with... Uh, and fly it, and... Uh, so I decided Oh, sorry I missed. <laughs> I I had I had one of my one of my bots uh, chimed in too, so uh oh sorry. Uh I'm not sure if I'm gonna butcher that name. The Amit ninety seven, I believe it is. Ah. Uh, well, I got time. Yeah, I got time. I got a story. Uh, I've been flying in VR for, uh, for over, I think for over four years now. And uh, I, uh, when X-Plane first got VR, uh, I, I am also a, a plug-in developer for the uh, Satec panels. And uh, I'm the author of that plug-in for X-Plane. So I had all these panels. Uh, Explain brought native VR to it, and um, but at that time I was using I was I was using a monitor, and uh, 
so I kind of like looked at it and uh, and heard what people were saying about VR, you know, and I went, well, <laughs> I says, if I try it and I get bitten by it, the panels that I have, the static panels I have, they'll be useless, so. Uh, so, uh, x -Plane released it on Christmas Day, and uh, I was just listening to people, like what they thought of it, and uh, they, it was all positive. So I decided I was going to buy me a VR headset, so I bought a Vive. Uh, I ordered it, and uh, and it showed up. Uh, it showed it up on the uh, 9th of January, which happened to be my birthday. So, so I started playing around with playing around with VR, and uh, and I was liking what I was seeing. I had VR for about a week. I was in Erie at the uh, KERI. Uh, I was flying this type of airplane, a 172, uh, a reality expansion pack, but, but many, many, many versions before. And uh, so I took off from the runway, and I did not, the temperature, the oil temperature was not in the green. It was, it just was not in the green. So I took off, and uh, the, uh, it was a thousand feet above the ground, and the engine died. And uh, so I kind of like went, uh, my training tells me I'm, if you were in a real airplane, it'd fly straight ahead. And uh, but I'm in a flight simulator, so I did a real gradual 180 turn, got the runway underneath me, to landed, and uh, with a with a dead engine, did it all dead stick. And uh, at that point, I only fly in VR. I never fly unless I'm testing. I never fly uh, a 2D screen. So that's how it compares to me. So we're about nine miles out. Say active runway. Cessna 6 Bravo Golf arriving and departing runway 25. Alrighty. So I'll dial that in. And once again, uh, this is an untowered airport I'm flying to, so uh, there's no... Uh, there's no tower to contact or any of that stuff. So, uh, so the only thing I have to kind of make sure is what the elevation is. Meadville Airport is uh, 1398. Oh, okay. Thank you. I'm. That is the part of chat that I I always kind of am concerned about. Sometimes I won't even try, you know. But the more the more I think about it, no, just go ahead and try, <laughs> and uh, you know, try. You'll you'll get it. If it's wrong, you'll be sold. <laughs> so, uh, so thank you so much. Alrighty, we're seven miles out. What do I gotta be? So, I gotta be at 2300, so I'm at 3000. I'm in pretty good shape. So, uh, kind of the goal now, I have CTAF dialed in. I have my, whoops, I have my heading indicator dialed in. Uh, all I gotta do is find, a, find this airport. So, this airport runs right along uh, 79, so I gotta kind of look. And see if I can find 79. Uh, I don't need anything else here. Let me... Uh, so there's 79 there. Oops. This is the fun part of flying. I know where the runway, where the airport basically is, but but actually trying to find it, nah, not necessarily that easy. So, got everything set correctly. Yeah, yeah. So it's five and a half miles right in front of me. So. You would think it shouldn't be that hard to find, would you? <laughs> uh, 
I have found just like in real life, eh, these aren't that easy to find. And like I said, I'm hand flying this, so I'm, uh, I have a magenta line I'm kind of looking at, you know, just to kind of make sure I don't fly completely off course, but, uh, so the runway, I have, uh, two five, so the runway should be to my left. And then I'll have to figure out uh, how to how to do. Uh, I don't think I want to do. Uh, I don't want to do a straight in approach. I want to do a pattern. So, so I want to get set up to do a downwind of uh, two five. But uh, it's kind of looking. There's seventy nine. So, 79 is here. Right there that air, is the airport. So, 25. So, I think. 3.2 miles. And straight in front. And I got to be at 2,300 feet, so I'm not... I'm not excessively high. And I can see on the GPS, I can see the direction of the uh, runway. And that, that all looks, everything looks correct to me, so. So two miles out, that's really hard to believe, isn't it? Right there, I see it. Okay, yep, I saw it. <laughs> At least I didn't fly over it. <laughs> Alrighty, so, so I'm turning, because I see the runway, the airport, it's right there. I almost flew over it. It, it, it's, uh, the runway kind of blended into the train. So, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to fly out. I'm going to do a teardrop. So, I'm going to go out, go to the left a bit here. Get you out of the way so I can actually, there's the runway. Pretty obvious now. And, uh, so I'm going to get out this way a little bit. Make sure I get out past this runway. And uh, then I'll, uh, I'm kind of going, trying to go away from the runway and uh, let myself lose some elevation, not a lot, just a little bit. And then I'll turn around and I'll get parallel with the runway for a downwind of runway 25. All righty. You don't want to fly out too far. Because then you'll lose sight of the runway. <laughs> All righty. So, going to do a 180 here. Turn this to a standard rate turn. So, I'll turn at this rate. You'll do a 360 degrees in two minutes. Doesn't matter what your airspeed is. Just what this gadget's telling me. Losing a little bit of elevation here. There's the runway.
Cessna 6 Bravo Golf downwind runway 25. Cessna 6 Bravo Golf this is Port Meadville Unicom on 123.0 please repeat your request. So I'm a little bit tight to the runway. So I'm going to go out here wide. This airport's really, it has this, I guess you could say it was a, it's a strange approach. You got this hill here. <laughs> so, so it, it's a little disconcerting that you got to get pretty close to this hill when you're making your approach. So, all righty. So, got the plane in the white arc. I'm going to pull the throttle back to 1600. I'm going to throw in one notch of flaps. So you're trying to get the plane to descend, and uh, but not uh, fly into the hill. Thank you for the follow. Thank you so much. Hey, it worked. All righty. So. Yeah, I think I'm good. So one more notch of flaps. Hopefully I wasn't too close. Yep, I'm just gonna, ooh. Just gonna have to keep it bringing it in. Need some more power. Yeah, this is all like so, uh, so disconcerting. Cessna 6 Bravo Golf, touch and go runway 25. Cessna 6 Bravo Golf, this is Port Meadville Unicom on 123.0. Please repeat your request. Ooh, this is steep. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Save that one. <laughs> wow, we got it. <laughs> oh, that's well, that was priceless. <laughs> that was priceless. Alrighty, uh this airport here's left traffic, so you fly runway heading. And uh, I need to get up to uh five hundred feet above uh above the field. And uh so once I once I'm at that, uh, then I go ahead and I can make a left-hand turn and get myself uh, set up for uh, for the next airport. So we just start making a turn here, left-hand turn. Yeah, my uh, I was having trouble with uh, my uh, stream, where when somebody would follow. I couldn't. I couldn't see the. Um, I couldn't see the name. I could hear the. I could hear the audio, but I couldn't hear the. Uh, I couldn't see and chat. Uh, who followed? You know. So. So I did some work on it uh, yesterday, and by by goodness, it actually worked. That's great. Because <laughs> I mean, I always like call out. You know, let let people know that I thank them for the follow. But uh, but I like to uh, if I can. The Amet 97 followed me, so that is great. Thank you so much. So we'll pull power back to about 2200 right here. And I'm going to kind of straighten out a little bit to uh, kind of to fly out a little bit this way what whichever way I'm flying I'll fly out that way to kind of get away from the uh, I just want to get around this airport 
and then dead. It's not too hard because I'm gonna, pretty soon I'm gonna run into 79. So, uh, and once I see that, I can, I can, uh, fly 79 up a little bit and then get myself on course. Yeah, that was a pretty ugly approach. <laughs> when I heard, heard the stall horn squawking at me, I went, oh no. <laughs> But I mean, it's all in, uh, I mean, when the stall horn comes in before you're gonna stall. So, uh, man, you are really, really climbing. I pulled the power back and the, the thing still wanted to climb. I'm trying to, trying to be at about 3,000 feet and uh, I'm, like, I'm just climbing way above it. There it is. It's kind of buried in the trees right here. But that hill there, it's just, um, it's all just an optical illusion, but you think you're, you know, you're so worried about, about running into the hill, you know, that you're, I was pulling up on the oak when I shouldn't have been. And just not worry about it. You're not gonna, you're not gonna run into it. And, uh, but, but I was worried about it, so I kept pulling up on the yoke, and the more you pull up on the yoke, depending on where your throttle is, the less airspeed you're going to have, so. Alrighty. Uh, it's supposed to be on a track of a 3... 303. So we'll come along there. I do like the road traffic, you know, in X Plane. Kind of, kind of adds to the immersion because you, if you were flying here in real life, that's what, that's what 79 would look like. About, about that kind of traffic. So, two lanes going north, two lanes going south. This goes from Erie, Pennsylvania. Uh, it ends up uh, in Pittsburgh and continues, but. Uh, but it ends up in Pittsburgh, so. Alrighty, why is my magenta line not showing up? Hmm. I don't know. Well, you know about where you need to be. Yeah, I guess I can activate the leg. Well, that didn't seem to make any difference at all. Oh well. Maybe. No, that didn't help either. Oh well. So, uh, whoops. So the next airport, uh, twenty miles away. Okay, eight.
Set COM 1 standby 122.800. COM 1 standby set to 122 decimal 8. This big body of water over here, this is Pymatuming Reservoir. It sets in between, it's basically, we're in PA. On the other side of that would be Ohio. So it's kind of on the border of, of Pennsylvania and Ohio. It's a pretty big body of water. I'll show you on the map here. So that's, this is Pymatuming here. So, so I'm seeing it from, from here. active runway for Kilo Hotel Zulu Yankee. Cessna 6 Bravo Golf arriving and departing runway 27. Okay. What I kind of expected, but you don't know if the winds may have changed. Stay weather for Kilo Hotel Zulu Yankee. Cessna 6 Bravo Golf. Cessna 6 Bravo Golf weather at Kilo Hotel Zulu Yankee is clear. Visibility is 10 miles winds are 1 9 or 8 at 7 knots cloud coverage is clear. Current altimeter is 3001. Temperature 242.1A. Cool. So all that's kind of jiving with what the uh is what I'm thinking, so.
So the elevation at uh, Kilo Hotel Zulu Yankee is uh, 921, so uh, my uh, pattern altitude will be around 2,000 feet. So when I get a little bit closer here, I'll have to uh, get rid of uh, about a thousand feet of elevation. So the uh, the land in this area is all pretty flat. You really don't have to worry too much about it, but uh, it's quite frankly easier to find airports if you're a little bit higher than a little bit lower. If you're right at pattern altitude, they can sometimes be very, very difficult to find. Oh, we're seven miles out. And it's supposed to be right in front of me. Wow. Those are some pretty spectacular frames for VR. Five miles, I'm still, it's still far enough out that I would rather uh, kind of stay here uh, than, uh, than try to drop down, so. Basically, I am flying, uh, the heading I'm on is the heading of the airport, of the runway, so... 
There it is. So, do I want to do straight in? No. No, there's the airport. I can see it. So let me go out a little bit. I'll do, uh, I'll do a downwind approach, and uh, we'll be good. I can see the airport right off to my, uh, off to my right. So. so we'll just go out wide here of it. Put you down just a little bit. And uh, not worry about losing some elevation here. There it is. I lost track of the runway. <laughs> I was like, where the heck did it go? <laughs> there it is. It's obvious when you know what you're looking for. So much like what I did at the previous airport, I'm just kind of going do a teardrop and uh, just circle, do a 180 get myself lined up for a downwind, so, for a left downwind of runway 27. So this runway is headed directly east and west, and I'm going to land going west. So, back with some power. That's probably a little better. I don't know what route this is. This is another four-lane highway that uh, runs to the west side of this airport. All righty. Pull her on around. I think I'm out here far enough. I should be okay. I pulled my RPM in, uh, down, so we'll just get a, get a turn going here. Just looking to see if you can see the runway coming out the other side here. I haven't turned enough. There it is. I was like, where'd it go? <laughs> uh, just kind of, kind of keep track of your surroundings. I'd come in a little bit. I'm a little bit too far away. Not really too bad though. So we'll come over here so I'm parallel with this runway. That's not a 6 Bravo Golf downwind runway 27. Cessna 6 Bravo Golf, this is Northeast Ohio REGL Unicom on 122.8. Please repeat your request. No. <coughs> Probably need to be a little bit lower, but we can uh, work through it. So, there's the numbers. Pull back the power to 1600. Hold back on the yoke. Let that get into the white arc. One notch of flaps. 
Make sure the plane is actually descending. And we're looking for... Not quite that fast. Uh, we're looking for that uh, runway to be uh, 40, uh, 45 degrees. Go ahead and turn in here. Whoops. Second notch of flaps. Whoops. That was not acceptable at all. That's what happens when you come in with too much airspeed. <laughs> I had over 70 knots when I tried to land the airplane. Bad idea. Very bad idea. I bounced at least two or three times. Rep will not be happy with me. I was having a hard time getting this plane to trim out. I don't know what my problem was, but but I was having a really hard time with that. So, but that's life. And also, because I was so flustered, I turned before I should have. I should have followed runway heading for a bit, but it's already done. out a little bit here. <clears throat> anyway, head back to Erie. Hopefully I do a better job there. That one was ugly. What? You have to learn from your mistakes. That was all too much airspeed. And then instead of being smart enough to go, you bounce it. Could do a go around. Nah, I think I can land this thing. <laughs> uh, well, you did, but took you a couple of tries. Alrighty, we're on our way to Erie, Pennsylvania, K E R I. See, my magenta line is coming here to meet me. Actually turned out to be a pretty good flight. So not bad. So should be on the heading of a uh, sixty one. Alrighty, I got enough altitude. So we're heading eastbound, so uh, normally uh, you would be uh, uh, odds, odds, or uh, yeah, odds, odds plus 500. So 
going east like this here, it would normally be uh, 3,500, but uh, I am uh, I'm choosing to uh, just to stay at 3,000 feet, and because uh, if you're three at 3,000 or less, then you're uh, that's legal also. So. So we're uh, 20, 28 miles out, 15 minutes. A little hazy today, but uh, to the left here is Lake Erie, one of the one of the Great Lakes. I have lived in this area all of my life, except when I was um, in the service. Kind of a, it's a pretty place. Winters can be a bit of a pain, but not terrible. We don't have tornadoes or hurricanes or that kind of stuff, so. resting with one of my feet further ahead. I looked down, I went, what, what are you doing, Bill? <laughs> I was wondering why the plane wanted to keep turning. <laughs> eh, because you were telling us that. That COM1 standby, 118.100. Com one standby set to one one eight decimal one. Okay, so that's uh, Erie Airport. So. Well, it didn't really set it that. That com one standby one one eight point one zero zero zero. Com one standby set to one one eight decimal one. Oh, that's better. <laughs> I looked over and it was 118.075. I was like, it's not what I told you. So a little bit here, we'll, uh, we'll contact Erie Tower and uh, make sure the runway is what I think it should be. It should be runway 24. So coming from this direction, I should be lined up for a uh, downwind for runway 24. I assume that's what they'll give me. Hey, weather at Kilo Echo, Romeo, India, Cessna 6, Bravo, go. Cessna 6 Bravo Golf weather at Kilo Echo Romeo India is clear. Visibility is 10 miles winds are 200 at 11 knots cloud coverage is clear. Current altimeter is 29er Temperature 242.17. Oh, the winds are at 21. So oh, there's a runway 24 so 
pretty likely I'll get a runway too far. Oh. I do this without crashing the airplane. Oh, that's where my video my uh video settings are, ain't they? Da 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 So that's kinda where I'm at. And uh so I'm giving X plane 2,000 by 2,000 on this um, on this uh, VR headset. So, so I am uh, a fairly happy camper today. So sometimes VR can be a struggle, but um, today not so much. So it will be. Entertaining when X Plane 12 uh, they get the uh, the public access. So, uh, so right now it's in a it's in a private access. So only uh, only a select number of people uh, have access to it. Mostly, well, mostly developers. Are the people that have access to it right now? So, people that make airplanes, some people that make plugins. So, about probably 200, 250 people, somewhere in that number. It's a small number. So, it's when you when you go public access, then. Um, uh, a lot more people will try it. A lot more people will have problems. <laughs> so, so you kind of, you kind of have to be ready. <laughs> so, but Austin a few days ago now said that uh, he wanted it in 30 days. So, 30 days would be before the end of this month. We will see if he can make that happen. So, and that. Is more related to his team than it is to Austin. He can want everything, but if his team says it's not ready, it's not ready. <laughs> so, uh, so, kinda, kinda hoping, kinda hoping. It'd be fun to stream it. That's what I'm looking forward to. 
three minutes. It's when you when you look down at these trees. This is one big difference is um, all these trees are flat. So if you look down at them, they may be too cross like this, but but both of them they're flat. They're they're a billboard. Where on uh, I explain twelve trees are three D volumetric and uh, and they're dynamic. So. so if the wind blows the next plane twelve you'll be able to look at a tree and go, Oh, I can tell where the wind's coming from without a wind sock. That's pretty slick. Okay, active runway. Cessna 6 Bravo Golf arriving and departing runway 24. Well, when I said that call without uh, specifying the uh, airport, and I'm on tower frequency, it got it right, you know, then that says to me that uh, I'm... Uh, I'm set up for a good chance that uh, I can uh, I can go ahead and land on uh, on the runway 24. So I'm just trying to get my approach set up. I can see the runway from here. I'm at uh, 8.3 miles, and I can I know what I'm looking for, and I'm basically on a runway heading. I'm on a I'm on a runway heading for runway six, so so I'm I'm on a on a heading for a downwind runway two four, so and I can see that runway in front of me. That's not a six Bravo Golf inbound the land runway two four. Cessna six Bravo Golf. Good afternoon. Squawk 1200 altimeter is 29er 9er 9er enter pattern on a left downwind for runway 24. Call downwind. Enter pattern on a left downwind for runway 24 Cessna 6 Bravo Golf. Set altimeter 2999. Altimeter 29er 9er 9er. Whenever I do that, I always look at the altimeter and make sure it doesn't go crazy. So it was off by a little bit. The uh, the weather from where I came from to where I am is a little bit different. So so she wants me to call downwind. Uh, yep, we're close enough. I'll pull back to 2,000. Try to get down to around 2,000. Trying to put the nose of the plane up a little bit here to uh, try to get the plane slowed down. I don't want it to climb, I just want to get rid of some airspeed. Haven't got it yet. getting better. We're still too high though. About down to 1800. I didn't want to, I don't want to make a really big change. Just, I just need to get this thing to descend a little bit quicker than it is. And do it at a slower, uh, at a slower airspeed. 
So pull back on the yoke, the nose goes up a little bit. Put down on the trim, so down at the bottom here it says nose up. That's what the trim wheel says, so. Well, it's just it's just a balance. If I get too close here, I'll uh, I'll have to be a little more abrupt, but I think I'll be okay. I, think I can just kind of take my time here and. Maybe not. So this land that juts out into the lake, that's our peninsula. So. Alrighty. So I'm going to try to get level right here. I'm 1,800 feet, so I want to be level right here. So as I get level, then I watch my airspeed. It's decreasing. So that's, that's what I had planned on. Don't want to lose too much elevation right here. Need to get a little bit wider of this. Uh, yep, you're way too tight in here. So I'm going to try to... That's my 6 Bravo Golf downwind runway 24. Cessna 6 Bravo Golf call turning final for runway 24. No, a little bit tight, but I probably can make this happen. I'm going out a little bit. And bring her back. Alrighty. A little low. So bring the power back to 1600. Hold back on the yoke. One not to flaps. Cessna 6 Bravo Golf turning final. Cessna 6 Bravo Golf winds are 190 at 11 knots cleared to land runway 24. Cleared to land runway 24 Cessna 6 Bravo Golf. I was too close. Sorry, overshot. But. We know how to make it happen.
Cessna 6 Bravo Golf Exit Runway when able. Ah, not too bad. Cessna 6 Bravo Golf, clear of active runway 24. Cessna 6 Bravo Golf, welcome to Erie International Ridge Contact Ground on 121.9er. Have a nice day. Ground on 121.9er Cessna 6 Bravo Golf. Oh, pilot to ATC automatically puts it in and then and then actually flips the frequency, so. Ground Cessna 6 Bravo Golf request taxi to general aviation parking. Cessna 6 Bravo Golf taxi to general aviation parking via taxiways Alpha, Echo, Bravo, hold short runway 02. Taxi to general aviation parking via taxiways Alpha, Echo, Bravo, hold short runway 02 Cessna 6 Bravo Golf. So uh, up here there's another runway, this runway that I landed on at 624, there's a runway 220, and uh, I have to cross that to get to the general aviation parking, so, so uh, you, you need permission to cross, uh, this is a towered airport, so uh, you need permission before you're going to cross an active runway, so. So uh, when we come up here, on the previous version of uh, Pilot to ATC that I was using, I always had to get permission here. But uh, this new version, I don't have to. It's the uh, Pilot to ATC sees me coming. Well, hopefully. Cessna yeah. 6 Bravo Golf cleared to cross runway 02. Cleared to cross runway 02 Cessna 6 Bravo Golf. So it it sees me coming towards this a, this uh, active runway, and it basically clears me because there's no traffic. So, um, but like I said, a previous version of Pilot to ATC that I that I was streaming with uh, didn't do that. So, so that that's a big improvement for me. So, you know, that it's all just automatic. It says, "Hey, yeah, uh, I see you coming. Uh, you're." Uh, you can cross the runway, so. So, a little bit quick here. Ugh. Whoops. That wasn't good. <laughs> so, I'm actually at idle, but. I was way too fast. <laughs> Brakes. <laughs> Uh, alrighty, oh that was fun. So, other than bouncing out at uh, the other airport, everything went pretty good. This uh, this landing wasn't too bad, wasn't bad. Alrighty, little mixture back. All the lights off, avionics off, okay, dokey. So, <coughs> um. Certainly, thanks for the follow, and uh, we'll uh, kind of call it a day. Uh, ended up doing just about when I thought I was, what I was hoping to get done. Uh, about the time I wanted to get done. So, so, I had planned for this to be kind of a different stream, but I kind of like looked at where the airports were and thought across country would be a lot of fun. Uh, the frames have actually turned out to be just awesome. So. Oh, right at the end, I'm going to go back over here to my graphics. So, so when I come into here, the, graph, the frames always go up. But So this is kind of where we're at. If I go up to here, man, I can, I can well, let me see if I can just do it. So if I go there, go back out. 
wait for it to uh, do its thing. Close what you can do then. I just stay in VR. So I'm basically looking at my desktop in VR. Sitting here watching uh watching X Plane uh do 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 whatever it does, getting everything ready, so it's basically compiling its shaders because I changed uh I made a pretty dramatic change in the uh in the graphics settings. And you should be able to see that in my frames. So it's kind of why I run my graphics where I do. Oh, come on. There we go. So I'll return the game, resume flight. Alrighty. So I can already tell. Yep. So we went from from like around 45 frames, sometimes up to 60, to in the 20s, barely getting to 30. Every once in a while, it jumps up to 30. So I mean, that one slider, man, has a tremendous amount of difference. Tremendous. So we're gonna go. Uh, I'll go back. Because if it's on HDR, nope. And, uh, well, I can't see the pretty lights at night. I, I fly in the daytime. I don't care. So, I put it there. Uh, I think everything else I left. I don't know if I was running that on high, but I, I seem to see enough objects. So, so, we click on done. And we have to wait again. Mm -hmm. All in all, that was a pretty good. That was a good flight. I just had way too much airspeed at that previous airport. Way too much. And I knew it when I was coming in. You know, but... I didn't do enough things to, um prevent it from happening so but I'm really glad that I got uh I got the follow to work where they show up in chat because as a as a VR streamer I'm kind of um <laughs> there's not a lot of us out there so uh so anything I can do to try to get people to uh uh I didn't whoops. Hmm. I just saw in uh chat that I didn't see that in my chat window. That's interesting. I don't see that at all. I see the hello that I've seen uh I heard when, when uh when they come in, so all right, back to the game. Yeah. I mean, like, just tremendously different. Tremendously different. So, uh, yeah. So that's why I set my settings where, I, where I'm at. It's exactly for that reason. And that, uh, that's why I also use this, this program, this FPS VR, so that I can, uh, I can quantify what I'm seeing. So, so I got milliseconds down and under. A little bit over 10, but most of the time under 10. So, but, alrighty, it's been fun. We're done. 
and I got some errands to run. So, uh, if you enjoy this content, please click on the follow button. So when I go live, uh, you'll uh, you'll get a notification. And uh, uh, I'm starting to uh, try to stream more and more. And um, when uh, when my schedule allows, uh, I do plan on when uh, when we do have a public release of X Plane 12. Uh, that will be all that I will stream is just X Plane 12. I won't do X Plane 11. I'll just do 12. And uh, trying to uh, trying to show it off, I guess would be the right term to use. So uh, what what I've seen looks pretty pretty cool, and uh, and those particular things uh, in my streams, I want to kind of uh, showcase them to the best of my ability in VR. <laughs> Because that's all I'm going to fly. I only fly in VR. So. Alrighty. Thanks much. Uh, guys, all have a great day. And uh, see you again in another stream. Bye-bye.